Hi there, thank you for joining us at Top Dog Tips' YouTube channel. Before we dive into today's topic, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel as well as hit the link below that we provide in the description to subscribe to our website. If you subscribe, you will receive a free ebook that covers 25 vet recommended homemade dog food recipes. Our topic for today is when your dog is scared of you and 10 things you can do to help calm them down. There are many reasons why your dog could be scared of you based on maybe if you've recently adopted a dog that had a previous owner, maybe that owner was abusive or they just may associate you with certain things. Like for example, my dog specifically, she hates cardboard boxes for whatever reason. If I come in the house with a cardboard box, she runs and goes and hides under a table. I can put the box down, she'll come and sniff it. And then if I pick the box back up, she runs away. So anyways, I digress. Let's get into some of the reasons why your dog may be scared of you. Number one, the dog is shy when they come from a shelter or pet store. Number two, like I said before, the previous owner used to hit the dog when they were frustrated or when they'd come in the house or whatever. Number three, owners that previously owned the dog used to raise their voice in extreme examples, possibly screaming or verbally abuse the dog. Number four, this has happened to me as well. The owner might have accidentally hurt the dog. I've stepped on my dog's tail and paw and they kind of uh, are a little leery after that, even if you did accidentally. Number five, there's a history of physical abuse or negative punishment as well as negative consequence training. For example, my dad and I, we have dogs that are sisters and we wanted to train them and get them well-trained by the time they were young adults. And one of the trainers we sought out used a shock collar. And you know, if I've put it on my hand, the shock collar and tested the levels and it, you know it's not terribly painful but it's uncomfortable but some dogs are just more sensitive usually dogs that are uh, hyperactive you know they're a little more jumpy so that's kind of what happened with my dad's dog when we would put a collar on after she would get real low to the ground and act scared or tail between her legs but it eventually went away and as we rewarded her you know, when we would, she would let us put her normal collar on. Anyways, number six is the dog was around other aggressive dogs or other intimidating animals. And number seven, the owner's body language indicates that they themselves are fearful or stressed. So dogs will read and pick up on body language. They're masters at reading body language. It's how they interpret their relationship with you. I know if a dog has peed on the floor and my body language is unconsciously looking upset or frustrated, obviously, I don't do anything except maybe put her in timeout. But however, she can tell right away that I'm not happy with her and she gets real low to the ground. Now, to avoid scaring your dog and losing trust, some of the things you should not do are, number one, don't be impatient or frustrated with your dog. Number two, do not withhold love or attention when the dog seeks it. Number three, try not to approach a dog that has retreated to their safe place. Number four, never force a currently fearful dog to do anything. Number five, avoid yelling or verbally intimidating the dog. And number six, avoid negative punishment or otherwise physically hurting the dog. So let's get into some of these reasons or what to do when your dog is scared of you. Number one, be patient. Every dog is different and much like humans, each dog will adapt to its environment and learn at its own pace. However, this could take a while uh, depending on the dog and depending on their previous upbringing. So this could take days, weeks, or months of consistent effort and training, rewarding them for you know being more confident depending on the dog dog's personality and the reason for their fear. Most dogs will learn to trust their owners and other humans with time and effort, but it's super important that you're patient. Never push, force, or become angry or frustrated with your dog during this process where they are fearful, as doing so will only make it worse. Number two, let the dog be. So your dog having their own space and time with less attention and less interaction is exactly what some dogs need to become comfortable. Just like another human coming on too strong strong can be intimidating. You coming on too strong to them can be intimidating to the dog as well. Sometimes the best way to gain their trust is just to let them take the lead in deciding what they want as far as an interaction with you. Also let them come to you when they want attention from you instead of you going to them. Number three, follow a predictable and reliable schedule. Typically when a dog is frightened or stressed, the hormone cortisol pumps through its body, making you know that fear response much worse, just like in humans, blowing things out of proportion, I'm sure 
we've all had little moments of panic or something like that when you immediately jump to the worst case scenario. One way to help the dog's fear and stress hormones subside is by creating and following a predictable and reliable schedule for the dog. When a dog knows they'll be fed at certain times and they have their own bed to lay on and they have playtime and will receive treats at certain times as well as training each day, they'll feel calmer with that specific consistency. Repeated actions when done in a calm and non-aggressive manner will increase a dog's trust. Number four, make a genuine connection with the dog. Most dogs enjoy humans when we pet them and a scratch or rub behind the ears or under the chin. Unfortunately, there's been dogs that have been physically abused and that's the current reality of the world. And they've been taught that human touch is a bad and scary thing and they're gonna get hit. If this is the case with your dog, if you've newly adopted one, you have to get creative. And I would seek professional training because it could be something that's out of your hands to make a genuine connection with the dog. Giving a dog treats during training sessions like turkey, chicken, tuna, when they do what is asked is one of the many ways you can build a connection when you cannot physically touch the dog while praising them. Use a positive and soothing tone to tell the dog good job and other affirmations. Another option is you can incorporate a clicker into your training sessions. When your pup does something brave, like approaching you, make the clicker sound instead of reaching out to touch the frightened dog and feed the dog a treat as well immediately alongside the clicker sound, letting them associate that sound with a positive experience. Also, if your dog has a fear of being near you, encourage them to come towards you by actually taking a step away, waiting for the approach, and then use the clicker to signal a job well done and a reward with a treat. Number five, targeted training efforts. Now, while clicker training works amazingly well for some dogs, you may require additional or other forms of training. It's all about trying to find different methods with a dog that's super fearful to find out what they're most comfortable with. Now, when a dog that is fearful does something quote unquote bad, like, you know, a dog that's afraid, just like my dog has been afraid at times and has peed herself. Instead of using negative punishment, try to ignore them in an obvious manner or, you know, just something neutral. No aggressive grabbing, but like just kind of put them in timeout. That way they're not afraid that if it happens that something bad is going to happen next. Research has proven that positive reinforcement for doing the right thing while ignoring bad or incorrect behaviors is also the best method of training fearful dogs. Dogs like kids will eventually seek attention. Therefore, if you ignore bad behaviors and reward only positive ones, it will naturally extinguish the bad behaviors in the dog. Now, this is not a blanket statement for all dogs, but it's another method that you can test to see. Number six, classical conditioning training. This form of training goes way back in time to a psychological experiment named Pavlov's dogs that a famous psychologist conducted with a group of dogs. They conditioned the dogs to salivate at the mere sound of a bell ringing by giving food to the dogs every time they rang the bell. Classical conditioning is incredibly effective. In fact, so like just a little bit more on that study or experiment, what would happen is they would keep doing that and then eventually they would just ring the bell without the food and that the dogs would salivate just because they've been conditioned. Classical conditioning is incredibly effective, especially for dogs that are afraid or fearful because with classical conditioning training, the dog learns to associate one thing with another. So for example, this often happens when you reach for a dog's food bowl or leash, the dog gets excited when they know that they're about to go on a walk or be fed. Both are examples of classical conditioning. This training method can also be used deliberately to train certain behaviors and responses in dogs and to counter condition dogs by associate something that makes a dog scared with something positive. Another example is if your dog is scared of the leash and does not want to have it attached to its collar, Every time you put the dog's collar and attach the leash, just reward them with a high value treat. As time goes on, the dog will eventually associate having their collar put on and the leash being attached with the positive feeling that come along with receiving a high value treat. This ultimately will extinguish the dog's fear of the collar or leash or anything that you consistently pair with giving a dog a high value treat. So counter conditioning, let's go a little bit into that. Another example of using this type of conditioning, counter conditioning, is one that you can use to make a dog that is afraid of you no longer afraid by dropping high value treats near them. 
Do this every single time that you walk by them. Soon the dog's fear of you will turn to excitement to see you because the dog associates a positive experience receiving a treat to you coming near them. Now, if you're gonna do this, just always remember to drop the high value treat whenever you're near the dog. It's important that you remember that until you notice that they feel comfortable, then you can start to remove the treats. Now, once the dog's fear response has been triggered, they lose the ability to think rationally and cannot make positive associations between the dog treats and you. That's why it's important to always do it until you see some progress. You'll need to learn exactly how close to the scared dog you can get before the dog's fear response is triggered. Maintain that distance as you walk by and you know casually drop the treat. Let's go to number seven, socialization for the dog. If you have a scared dog that sees another dog interacting with you playfully and positively, this will have a effect on your dog that is fearful and it will help the dog see you as a human they can trust. I've seen this happen just in a different sense where if another dog gets a positive experience during something that your dog's afraid of, it can help being around that dog, helping your dog that's fearful gain more confidence. It's really beneficial if another dog lives in the home with you and your new fearful dog. Even if you do not have another dog with your fearful dog, it can still be repeated by having another calm dog come around you. Well, let's say you're going on a walk or a situation like that. Number eight, go out in the world together to explore. Go on hikes or walks in public places with your dog that's typically fearful because it could be a great bonding experience that teaches them to trust you. If your dog is too intimidated by the leash or the outside world to go on walks, that's fine. You can take this step actively by exploring things inside your home first and all over your yard before you step out into like a bigger travel experience with them. Let's just give an example on how you can take this step. Say your dog is super interested in a particular plant or bug that catches their eye, wait for the dog to finish exploring this object. Once the dog walks away, immediately go over the same object that they were looking at and explore it with interest, allowing the dog to see that you have common interests. Now repeat this step following your dog's footsteps. Exploring the things that your dog is interested in is a trust building exercise and positive experience for your dog as they see you interested in the same things. Number nine, make sure you play with your dog. Playing with a scared dog, it can be difficult. However, if you engage a fearful dog in any play, can and will be a great bonding experience. So an example is you don't wanna throw a ball or toy towards them, especially since they're fearful as they would flinch thinking that you're going to hit them and it'll cause them to shut down. So an effective way to do this is you can utilize a ball or any toy attached to a long rope of some sort. This way you can move the ball or toy from a distance and engage the dog in a game of chase or pounce without having the dog get too close to you. This will allow the dog to play without triggering their fear response. You know, also make sure you allow the dog to catch and keep the toy that they are chasing. That way they'll continue to want to play. And then number 10 is just continue to build trust when moving forward just because you see success in helping your dog become less fearful that doesn't mean that you can discontinue all your efforts or stop all of them there's a chance that if you just immediately stop doing the things that were working you can reverse all the work that you put in so just make sure you continue to be consistent and make it just part of the routine and part of their lifestyle make sure to only bring well-trained well-behaved dogs around your fearful dog because your dog could be also triggered by a aggressive like untrained dog when you introduce your dog to a new situation experience and other people make sure to do it slowly and make sure to give the new people that they meet that your dog meets treats to drop on the ground if the dog approaches them and always avoid eye contact with the dog and not approach him so let's go over some signs as far as how to know if your dog is afraid of you so some signs on the lookout for by is looking at their body language. So like, here's just a list of several examples. When your dog flattens its ears, they have their tail between their legs, they won't make eye contact with you, excessive yawning. They have raised hair by the back of their neck, licking their lips, persistent scratching, whining, biting, pacing, clinginess, submissive urination, tracking your movements carefully, leaving the room when you enter, and as well as not accepting treats. All right, well, that's gonna do it for us here at Top Dog Tips. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon.